What do this nudibranch, this scallop, this limpet, and this cuttlefish all have in common? They're all mollusks. Mollusks are a phylum of extremely diverse marine invertebrates with over 100,000 species alive today. There are seven taxonomic classes of mollusks, including the A. placophora, the monoplacophora, the scaphopoda, the gastropoda, the polyplacophora, the bivalvia, and the cephalopoda. As you can see, different mollusks have diversified their morphology over evolutionary time to best suit their ecological niche. Despite these differences, mollusks always have five characteristics, or synapomorphies, which unite them as a taxonomic phylum, with a few exceptions. The first synapomorphy is a three-part body plan, including a head, a muscular foot, and a visceral mass which encloses the organs. This body plan has undergone spectacular modification in many lineages of mollusks. Take a look at this octopus, for example. Its muscular foot has been modified into eight arm-like appendages. Octopus and other cephalopods are well known for their highly cephalized head region. This means that there is a high concentration of sensory organs and nervous system control found at the anterior end of the body. On the other hand, this clam has lost its head altogether. Bivalves have evolved not to have a head region because their sessile lifestyles don't require having extensive sensory organs like more mobile mollusks. And though it may look like it's sticking its tongue out at you, that's actually its foot. Bivalves often use their muscular foot to feel around their surroundings and dig down into the sand to hide from predators. The second synapomorphy of mollusks is the mantle. The mantle encloses the visceral mass and secretes the calcium carbonate shell, which is the third synapomorphy. Once again, the mantle and shell have also undergone interesting adaptations throughout the evolution of different molluscan lineages. For example, many mollusks modify their mantle into a siphon. This clam has its siphon extended out of its shell and is using it to pump water into its body for filter feeding. Nautiluses, a type of shelled cephalopod, use their siphon for locomotion by jetting water out of it to move backwards. Mollusks show a huge diversity of shell morphology, especially among the different taxonomic classes. The A. placophora have no shells at all. Instead, the mantle secretes spicules, which are sometimes modified into scales. Many gastropods have the classic coiled shell, but some have an uncoiled shell, an internal shell, or no shell at all. Chitons, in the class Polyplacophora, have a shell with eight interlocking plates, which can also be internal, like in the enormous Cryptochiton. Bivalves have the familiar two-halved shell, joined by a hinge with interlocking teeth. Finally, Nearly all cephalopods have a greatly reduced or absent shell, except for the nautilus. Squids and cuttlefish both have reduced internal shells, but octopus have no shells at all. The fourth synapomorphy for mollusks is a tooth-covered, tongue-like feeding structure called the radula. The radula is present in all mollusk groups except for the bivalves, which don't need a radula because they are filter feeders. Chitons eat mainly by scraping algae and diatoms off rocks, so their radula is equipped with embedded metallic ions to prevent it from getting worn down. The fifth and final synapomorphy of mollusks are the tinidia, which are feather-like gills unique to the phylum. Most mollusks use tinidia for respiration, but some lineages, such as the bivalves, use them to filter out food particles. Now that we know the five defining characteristics of mollusks, 
let's take a closer look at some cool examples of mollusks in action. Nudibranchs are in order within the class Gastropoda. They are a group of wonderfully diverse sea slugs with astounding variation in color and pattern. Most of the nudibranchs shown in this video are found in the Salish Sea and were taped at Friday Harbor Labs. Cephalopods are a very unique class of mollusks. Unlike other mollusks, they have a closed circulatory system, which they need because of their heightened mobility. They also hatch their young as juveniles rather than going through the trochophore and veliger larval stages typical of most mollusks. Cephalopods also have amazing sensory organs like their unique eyes, which make them formidable predators. Also helpful in predation is their amazing, color-changing, shape-shifting skin. Cephalopods have chromatophores, which are small sacs of pigment in the skin that they can expand and contract to change color. Chromatophores work in concert with iridophores, which are mirror-like cells that change color depending on the viewing angle. Cephalopods also possess a hydrostatic skeleton, which allows them to change their shape and texture at will. Using their chromatophores, iridophores, and hydrostatic skeleton together enables cephalopods to be masters of disguise. Because of their uniquely well-developed neurosensory structures, cephalopods are currently being used to study our own genetics and development. Most of the cephalopods shown in this video are from the cephalopod breeding program at the Marine Biological Laboratory in Woods Hole, Massachusetts. I hope you enjoyed learning all about what makes mollusks truly unique and amazing organisms. Thank you so much for watching.